Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about network protocols, and we're going to analyze some network protocols using this tool called Wireshark. So Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer that helps us see what is the network traffic going between the host machine as well as how other machines are interacting with this particular uh, machine that you're trying to run your Wireshark on. So the the idea of network protocols are particularly important and it is imperative that you truly understand the OSI 7 layers and have it at the back of your mind anytime where you want to understand what are the inherent traits within all of these network protocols. And from there, you'll be able to understand what are their weaknesses, where are their vulnerabilities. So we're going to see some examples today on how denial of service attacks are actually being ran because of the TCP hand three-way handshake communication. And because it consumes so much amount of computing resources for the victim's machine, if we were to flood it with a lot of traffic, it would actually take down the entire server. And at the same time, there are also other protocols that have a lot of issues. So for example, you have the address resolution protocol. So we're actually able to relay network traffic to your machine if you were to poison the address resolution protocol so that all traffic actually goes to your machine instead of the intended target. So that could be possibly for another video. So today we're going to go into the demonstration of Wireshark and help you understand more about how we can understand network traffic. So I have Color Linux running over here and all you got to do is enter sudo wireshark and this will actually help us launch the wireshark console so we click ok and over here on the left side of the screen we have the different kind of network interface that we can choose to start monitoring and of course if you scroll over to the do a green bar you can click start new live capture and it's going to capture all the network traffic that are going to interface with the network interface card so of course i can enter I hit enter 182.168.1.11 and of course this is gonna show us a bunch of traffic that is being that are being captured so what you're gonna do is there are different colors to highlight the different kind of network traffic that is being transmitted with the network interface card between the current machine and 192.168.1.11 so of course to, to, to identify or to understand more about how the how the colors are being highlighted you can re recognize that Green is actually for TCP traffic, dark blue is for DNS traffic, light blue is for UDP traffic, and black identifies TCP packets with problems. So for example, it could be delivered out of order as you can see over here. So moving forward is that we are we want to filter certain packets in, in the Wireshark because there's so much information and we just want to be specific on what exactly are we trying to find. So the most basic way to apply a filter is by typing it into the filter box at the top of the window and clicking apply. So for example, if I just want to see DNS packets, I can just click DNS and I can click apply. So this is just going to show me all the DNS packets that are there around. So of course I am, I can see that we have 192.168.1.18, which is the existing host machine IP address that is talking to 192.168.1.254. So 254 is my network router in my environment. So we can see that this is a standard query. So a safe browsing dot google dot com, for example. So there are different, different information that you can get out of it. So of course, at the same time, the network router, which is dot two five four, will also be speaking to this particular machine. So you could actually go in a little more and you can understand exactly what kind of information are being sent over. So as we scroll down, we can see more information about this particular interaction between this particular packet interaction so these are the information over here in hexadecimal and of course moving forward we can also click to we can remove this particular filter and then we click apply and it's going to show us all the packets that have been exchanged and of course we will target certain specific information that we want to find out on so we see that over here we have a tcp packet so we can click follow tcp stream so of course you'll be asking what's the what's the idea of of trying to understand about TCP stream, right? So this allows us to see the full conversation between the client and the server, and of course you can see this is the Google Internet Authority G zero, and this is a safe browsing cache at google.com. Of course you can find different information depending on what you're looking for. So we can click close for this item, 
And so we can, of course, inspect packet by selecting it, and we can dig down further into understanding what kind of information are being exchanged. So, of course, I can clear this again, and I can move over to maybe something that is uh, I have more control over. So, moving upwards, let's take a look at maybe the green one. So, looking over here, we can see the information that this was a sync. And then, of course, followed by a sync acknowledge and acknowledge. So this is clearly a TCP three-way handshake. So what's happening is that in a three-way handshake, you're going to send a sync, and the server, which is dot eleven, will send a sync acknowledge back. And then after that, you end the, in a way, you confirm the initiation of the connection with a acknowledge from the initiating client to the server. So of course, we are able to see more information by by clicking onto the packet and then seeing exactly what kind of information is being exchanged. So this is the frame over here on 66 bytes on wire and 66 bytes captured on 528 bits. So every byte is 8 bits. And of course, we can see uh, more clearly what kind of information it is. And it is particularly important for you to understand exactly how computers talk to each other because it allows you to understand and as a way to fundamentally know what kind of information are being exchanged in your network. So for example, when, when we are conducting a denial of service attack or a distributed denial of service attack, we will be using plenty of sync being sent over to the server to overwhelm and to consume computing resources from the server. So what's going to happen is that once the sync is being sent over to the server, the server will have to compute the information and then of course to provide an instruction which is sync acknowledged back into the client. And this itself creates a lot of computing resources in order to initiate and to confirm the connection. So in a, in a large way, what's going to happen is that if you were to flood the server with plenty of TCP sync while not caring about acknowledging it, what's happening is that you're just strictly flooding the server with a lot of information, a lot of processing requirements, so much so that it overwhelms the server and it's no longer able to respond to legitimate responses. So in, in a way, you can think about distributed denial of service attacks that will actually conduct plenty of sync from perhaps even millions of devices and it will flood into 192.168.1.11, for example, and overwhelm it so that other legitimate users are unable to authenticate fully and properly into the server. And another really interesting idea is what we call the ARP, which is Address Resolution Protocol. And I'm not too sure if you have heard of it, but we are able to do ARP poisoning so that we can redirect all traffic in the network into your network interface card. So when you do that, what happened is that all the traffic will be going through your network interface card and you'll be able to sniff out passwords, usernames, cookies, sessions, PHP ID, etc. so that you can gain confidential and sensitive information through sniffing of packets in your network environment. And that is really dangerous for in order to secure your enterprise network. So we're going to discuss more about how we can actually defend against such intrusions, such, such way of monitoring the, the network, and how can we circumvent and make sure that we are well protected from attackers actually trying to get password unauthorized accesses into your systems. So there you have it. We actually went through the demonstration of Wireshark, really trying to understand how machines actually talk to each other using the different protocols. So what's really important for you is to go back and really understand, read and examine how the OSI 7 layers are actually being used, what are the network traffic protocol, how do machines actually talk to each other. And in fact, you could actually see the relay of, of the network traffic packet from one end of the machine to, to the other part of the world. And when they go through different routers, switchers, the, the ISP, internet service providers, so you can actually see that there are many, there could potentially be filterings going on, tracking, tracing of the network packet going on. So as a computer hacker, chances are you really want to understand how you could bypass a filtering, firewall filtering, switches filtering, routers filtering. And as a, as a enterprise system administrator or security practitioner, then the question will be how else could you actually anticipate certain malware or certain malicious activities going on in your network traffic. So of course, if you enjoy what you have watched today, 
on the presentation and demonstration, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And thank you for watching.